Thank you. Uh, I start with the thanks to the organizer. It is uh, a pleasure to, for me to participate in this conference, though motivated by a sad event. It demonstrates our life and affection towards a person whom I knew from very early days and loved and admired. Perhaps I'm the only one here. Uh, there could be Kambarov, there, uh, Kapranov, but I don't see him around. So, is there? Oh, yes, good. So, there are two of us who knew very young Volodya. Uh, there were no doubts that he was extremely bright. But as for me, I was not at all sure that he'll be able to organize himself in such a way as to become uh, the star uh, what really happened to him. Um, so uh, essential part of my today's talk will be devoted to devoted to the mathematics we were doing together uh, during the early days of Volodya's mathematical life, and I'm still working in this domain. Uh, and as for reminiscences, uh, 15 years ago he uh, invited me, me here, and it is also a pleasure to remember our walks around and talks about the foundations of mathematics. Okay, so here is the uh, rather detailed plan, plan of my today's talk. Please ignore what is on the right hand side. It's uh, just if we need navigation. The most part of the talk will be totally elementary. So, this is now I have just to explain the uh, title of my not quite usual talk. As for these three people in the title, I've just uh, noticed some similarities in their fate, their characters, and I'll give some very superficial comments about that. But there is more than that. There is some mathematical line that joins them. And uh, I'll try to speak about it. OK, so here they are with their years uh, of uh, life. Now the first ob observation is just about their uh, timelines uh, briefly, uh, mostly about their academic careers. As you see for, and perhaps know, without any talk by me, that uh, all the three had some difficulties in reaching, uh, well, some successful uh, position. As for the first of them, Galois never reached it during his life, but he became famous after that. As for the others, uh, well, you will see some data, and perhaps many here know more about that. Uh, I hope I warned the listeners that I'm going to be rather superficial. Uh, so, however, uh, this is what I've, uh, I was trying to notice, uh, what really uh, is common in them. Uh, so, really early intensive 
work as for Vaivodsky. I have observed that just instead of attending formal classes, he read Eskildam program instead. Mm. And uh, well, uh, the second small observation is that the, they started with something else. It shows us both that, mm, well, they could do different mathematics and uh, that they were definite en enough to find uh, their proper domain in mathematics. What is uh, the most important is perhaps this style of thinking that could be somehow related to the lack of regular education. These te very talented mathematicians started, start, started uh, thinking themselves very early in the age where other just pass exams mostly instead of that. And well, the last one is more or less obvious. So, uh, now these are just three quotations, uh, well, in French and uh, even in Russian. I don't think that de the details of them are important, but what is the common feature? That uh, they were in some argument, not with um, definite people, like many normal people do, but with the whole mankind. Something in them was against everybody. Uh, as for uh, relations with the society, it seems to me that Valodya was the most friendly among the three. He didn't quarrel with the, the who, uh, who team where he worked. People here know that better than I do. Uh, is it already? Um, now, uh, now we uh, more or less turn to mathematics. So, of course, the most important part of the whole story is what was left by them. And, uh, well, uh, I suppose that maybe uh, what was not done but could be done if they lived longer, well, in the case of Grothendieck, he lived long enough, but uh, started doing other things, what they could do and what they dreamed about and left to other mathematicians, maybe to us, to, to complete their ideas. So I am trying here to, uh, to formulate something well, as for symmetries, it's especially obvious in the case of Galois, as for fundamental structures, of course, both Grotendieck and Wojewodzki discovered a lot. As for intuition, uh, somewhere where it is not working in an obvious way, uh, all the three were um, were famous for that. Perhaps I should make a small comment about Galois because uh, just preparing this lecture, I read attentively his um, last letter. Uh, and after the summary of what we, uh, he has uh, done that everybody know, mm, uh, there was a small passage that much more important is what I was planning to do. Uh, he wrote to his friend, and um, uh, generally he called it the application of transcendental methods to, uh, to equations, his, uh, well, main domain. But uh, then he said something, wrote something more definite that is difficult to understand uh, precisely. 
but uh, he mentioned number of periods of uh, algebraic curves. That means that he had some idea, uh, I think it means that he had some idea of genus decades before Riemann. So uh, what he really did in mathematics uh, was related to equations and was some perhaps a pure algebra, but he had in his mind the concept, uh, concepts that were materialized further. Well, and there is something obvious, obvious uh, at the end of it. Now, perhaps I turn to to the main uh, um, major subject of the talk. Uh, I mean, uh, the Seng Dangfang theory. Uh, so, as perhaps everybody knows, it is taken. Uh, from Grossendieck's Descent uh, Esquisse d'un Programme. Uh, in fact, I was, we, we both, Volodya and me, read attentively the first three sections out of ten, but I stopped there and uh, I'm working. A quarter of a century has passed and I'm still working on them. But Volodya moved further to Annabellian geometry and and so on, but uh, what I'm going to uh, show now is uh, some mathematization of uh, Grossendieck's ideas that were just expressed in some free and poetical form. Uh, so uh, it is strange enough for me that he didn't, uh, in these parts, he did not use categorical uh, language explicitly. But uh, we'll work with it. Uh, and uh, uh, I'm going to introduce these three categories uh, one uh, by one. Uh, now here just uh, some uh, general uh, words uh, that um, made me uh, make some choice whether I'm going to speak about categories themselves or about the languages languages. There are three very different languages um, describing the objects of these categories. You'll see that. And uh, now I just, uh, sorry. Uh, well, uh, so, um, I, I, sorry for interrupting uh, myself. There are some remarks uh, here. Uh, I mean, the found foundational problems have nothing to do with our category. And I suggest some uh, term, term that um, perhaps is not um, widely used. Uh, the categories are not small, though one can be considered as small. But they are what I suggest to call moderate. That means that the classes of isomorphic Objects constitute as uh, constitute sets. Uh, so, and all the sets are countable, easily. I would say, easily countable. And then you see what are the uh, differences between. At this stage, it just shows that uh, these categories are really basically different. So, to them, one by one, and we start with topological uh, language. Somehow I have no, almost no pictures on my slide, so we uh, switch on our imagination. Well, descent down form is basically a graph embedded into the surface, and uh, I suggest a convenient definition both of graph and of descent down fung, the complement of the set of each dimension and the set of previous dimension is just a disjoint union of disk of the corresponding uh, dimensions. So at this, this point, some classical mathematics, mathematicians, uh, sorry, say that what are you telling us? Uh, you have defined a uh, cell complex, a uh, cell complex like this, but uh, we are working with a category, and 
the morphisms uh, in our category are uh, really different from that of cell complexes. And just uh, uh, unfortunately, the definition is a bit long. I never liked it, but perhaps uh, we spend about a minute to um, um, follow um, it. Uh, but I promise that for the other two categories, the definition of morphisms will be much more convenient. Uh, so we introduce an empty set there and demand the, this uh, respect for all the uh, differences. Uh, sorry, I, uh, oh, uh, I didn't um, emphasize this non-classical uh, condition that uh, we are considered only open maps. Why is it so? There is a somewhat forgotten uh, theory by Stailov. They are Stailov maps, and it is just a topological theory of category of Riemann surfaces to uh, together with um, the morphism that can be made holomorphic um, after intro introducing the proper complex structure. Uh, so here this condition just uh, um, is um, in the uh, definition, and well, the equivalence is kind of obvious. So, well, establishing that this definition is uh, uh, consistent with the other uh, ones is boring but straightforward. So, this is the first category we are going to work, to work with. The second one is the most uh, technical. It should be noted here, perhaps, uh, the a bit funny history of it. Grothendieck uh, had some serious reasons to turn from abstract algebraic geometry to something elementary, because having moved to Montpellier, he had to work with students who knew nothing. And he st started from scratch. In the same way as in his very young years, he invented himself the whole uh, theory of Lebesgue integral and was a bit surprised that people already know over what he worked for years. Uh, in fact, uh, the story repeated here completely because this group theoretic way of describing uh, graphs on surfaces that before Grotendieck were called not descents but maps. Um, it was uh, well known to the experts. For example, there was a Canadian, I think, uh, mathematician, Tat, who wrote a detailed paper, What is a Map, with all this machinery. However, Grothendieck invented it uh, himself and gave names that I like much more than the original ones. So there are reasons to call it the cartographic <coughs> group. Uh, so you see here uh, the formal definition of its simple uh, presentation. Um, it is isomorphic to a free product of these groups just because of, um, uh, since because of these relations, you um, uh, can uh, delete rho sub two or rho uh, sub zero, uh, but it's convenient to have all the three um, because they have well, some easy geometrical uh, sense, uh, all of them. Mm, now, uh, the reason for the name can be um, understood a bit, just a bit later. Uh, so, as for these conditions that we are considering, finite homogeneous uh, sets uh, will be uh, clear as soon as for every descent we introduce the set of its directed edges. And uh, then on these edges we consider three operations. Suppose this is one and uh, we rotate it contrary clockwise. Uh, sorry, maybe I didn't emphasize. 
uh, enough that our surfaces are oriented, not only orientable. So counterclockwise transformation makes sense. Rho sub 1 just changed the direction. And uh, well, it is a bit additional. Rho sub 2, since uh, our um, surface is subdivided into cells, rho sub 2 moves an edge uh, along the cell that lies on the left of it. So this is the definition. And as uh, at the same time, it is a functor. So the set of directed edges is acted upon by the cartographical group. And uh, 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 well, uh, for example, the uh, transitivity of this action just means the connectedness of the surface. Uh, uh, so I have mentioned uh, that uh, this uh, category is, uh, uh, first of all, it can be considered uh, as small since the uh, uh, homogeneous uh, sets are, well, finite sets are in one-to-one uh, -one correspondence to the conjugacy classes of uh, uh, subgroups of finite indices, uh, and they are very uh, easily stored in the computer, unlike, say, just the, uh, the things that we draw and see. So that's it. More, uh, more about the algebraic, uh, algebra geomet geometric language. And here we start uh, from an arbitrary um, algebraically closed field. And now we have a, a curve on it, a good curve on it. And we consider, uh, well, I didn't mark that the functions, all the rational functions are supposed to be non-constant. And what is important, the, correspond uh, the corresponding field extensions are supposed to be separate, unfortunately now, are supposed to be uh, se separable. Uh, so here is the, uh, then we can define, uh, define the critical values of rational functions uh, that uh, let's think about it uh, as about maps to the projective line and the critical um, values are such that the number of pre-images is smaller than almost everywhere uh, than the degree and what is drawn here is that over the three points that we normalize to be 0 1 infinity there can be arbitrary branching, though over any other points there is no branching. Uh, the um, map uh, is a tail. And now a couple of examples. So, um, uh, well, soon we'll understand uh, when we can find a Billy uh, function on a curve. But to begin with, there, here is a two parametric family of uh, curves possessing the BLA function. Very easy to, it is very easy to check. And many automorphisms, it is a technical term among the people who study the automorphisms of uh, curves. Uh, so when the group of automorphisms is large enough, uh, the factor ha is, has genus uh, zero, and uh, if the group is large enough, then it can be easily shown that it uh, uh, branches only over three points. So this is another large class of uh, BLE pairs. Now the second part of this mm, um, uh, exposition is that among the Billy pairs, we distinguish the clean ones. Uh, you should look here. 
So we restrict the branching over one of the three points. Here is the standard algebraic uh, definition of it. And uh, what is marked here as important, unfortunately for the uh, odd characteristics, if non-zero. And I should confess that the theory in characteristic two, I could say, does not exist, uh, or at least I'm not aware of it. So, to the end of today, the characteristics of base field is non, uh, not two. Uh, and then there is an easy exercise that uh, saying that if you have an uh, arbitrary Billy function, you uh, transform it to the clean one. It is um, it all can be drawn. So this restriction that is technically important for us uh, is, um, uh, is imposed and uh, does not restrict us seriously. So the next part of it will be, we'll now see what. Um, uh, so, um, so why two categories? It is just be because we consider the category of Billy pairs. And here the morphisms, as I have uh, promised, are obvious. And we just consider a full subcategory uh, of clean Billy pairs that, well, I traditionally denote by the index two, reminding us about the twofold uh, ramifications, and uh, then this, uh, the understanding of this uh, functor perhaps need just a bit of uh, geometric efforts. Uh, so our condition of cleanness mean, I can try just to mimic something, uh, mean that mm, uh, the, uh, in all the pre-images of one, now we think about complex curve. Uh, the Billy function uh, behaves as squaring. So every edge is just folded in the every preimage of one. And uh, we can check easily that uh, uh, when we take just the topological model of our algebraic uh, C here, C. Now we are over complex numbers. Uh, we have um, mm, the topological model. The graph is just the pre-image of the segment, and the vertices are uh, just zero of Billy function. So this is the uh, maybe central functor of the whole theory that is called draw. It is a functor of drawing Billy there, and it is rather easy theorem. Uh, well, I would say to modern mathematician um, um, that it is really an equivalence of categories. Uh, what I mean, maybe I say a couple of words, that if we have a descent, we immediately restore a complex structure on it in such a way that the topological covering is holomorphic. And since uh, we have the only complex structure on the Riemann sphere, and the three points are uh, also have no continuous invariance and can be transformed to by fractional linear transformations to zero, one, infinity. So there are no moduli, and we restore the complex structure and use the Riemann theorem that it is, in fact, an algebraic structure. So it is uh, just some standard material. And what is next? Next is just the claim that the two functors uh, mentioned uh, briefly uh, realize the equivalence of the three categories considered. Now I don't know whether it is seen that the proof is long and boring. I've spent once in my life about a year to write it down and never since then returned to it and never met a mathematician 
who uh, doubted it or was interested in any details. <laughs> so, but this is an existence theorem. Some Russian text with all the details exist. Um, now uh, we turn to a um, much more non-trivial material. Uh, so it is um, well formulated in the way that is perhaps forbidden, forbidden in good mathematical society and definitely in this conference. So there is no equality even between objects, but I'm writing uh, the equality of the equality be, um, between different categories is absurd, of course, but it is a very short way to um, formulate a, a very simple statement that whenever a curve admits a Bailey function on it, that is a covering of a, a projective line rem, uh, branched uh, only over zero, one, infinity. Then it is defined over number field. Uh, the reason is just that, just written here. Uh, so uh, it is really easy to understand. Uh, though there are uh, long texts with the reproduction of uh, this easy Billy theorem, the reason for it is just that Mm, the abstract algebraic, algebraic geometry is not well known among, uh, say, experts in graph theory. But what is much more interesting is the hard, pie, uh, hard um, half that tell us uh, it is really a Billy theorem, highly non-trivial, that tells us that a Billy function can be found on any curve over uh, Q bar. And I'd like to give an interpretation of it in terms of moduli spaces. So let's look for Billy functions on every complex curve of a fixed genus. Uh, so in most cases, we uh, are not going to find it, and then the Billy height is infinite. Uh, if there exists some, we uh, call the Billy height the minimum possible degree, uh, of course, this minimum being infinity if there is known. And then it turns out that mm, the uh, points in the moduli space with finite Billy height uh, are precisely the curves defined over a Q bar. Uh, and I'll return to this uh, object as, it's, as it is. Mm, in my opinion, it's just a very fundamental characterization of, uh, oh, something happened here, or I press it in a wrong way. Mm -hmm. Is there anybody who can help me? It stopped switching the sides. Somebody there? Well, sometimes it works. Um, uh, so there is an idea of my teacher Manin about uh, various heights that uh, are known in algebraic geometry that they are uh, something like Kolmogorov complexity. In any uh, case, in an informal way, the usual heights measure the amounts of information needed to define an object uh, completely. Uh, so there cannot be any kind of uh, equality because uh, Kolmogorov complexity is al algorithmically non-calculable, mm, non non-calculable, while all the heights are. But um, there are um, the uh, algebraic uh, heights majorate the Kolmogorov ones. So uh, the relations uh, were studied by various uh, people, and the question is very much open uh, as for the good, the reasonable 
relation. When I'm writing wild, I just uh, didn't want to write down here the double exponents and uh, so on. Perhaps maybe there are some uh, reasonable estimates, but uh, we'll return to it. And now I want just to remember one of Valodia's ideas that was not elaborated uh, further uh, as it is written here. So what we were discussing up to now was just the Billy function of the smallest uh, possible degree. But his idea was to consider all the set of uh, Billy functions and he thought about them as about vertices of some simplicial complex, since between there are some combinatorial relations mm, um, uh, between Bailey functions on the same curves, uh, well defined by post-compositional. If anybody thinks about it, you'll understand uh, what is it. And therefore, any uh, curve over a Q bar define some multi-dimensional topological object and uh, Valodi supposed that uh, this object carries essential information about the arithmetical curve or maybe enough information to restore it. So it was dropped by him, but perhaps his work uh, on Grafendix and Abelian conjecture used the same approach. So it was kind of a side. Is there any other way to move around? Yes. Um, now, uh, let's have a small emotional uh, part. It is just a quotation. Okay. You can read it as it were, or Leila's uh, transla English translation. Um, he compared it, what is not perhaps seen here. Um, as he said, uh, this uh, this, uh, his impressions, of course, he didn't mean uh, my notations, but uh, when he understood that descents, uh, the theory of descents and theory of arithmetic curves are the same theory, he uh, felt some emotions that, as he write, uh, was uh, felt by him only once before that, when he was told about rotondité parfait, uh, of the cir circle. Uh, I should say uh, that um, Skizdan program is uh, not written in a clear way from mathematical point of view, but as for the emotional point, it is just a great piece of, um, piece of prose. So I recommend it to anybody. Okay, so this was about uh, emotions, uh, and now, so it started uh, quite long ago. Now here I give some timeline of uh, what happened, if anybody is interested. Uh, so you see that the domain is, well, not so active as others, but active enough, and uh, for example, here you find quite a complete overview. Um, now we turn to the uh, initial problem of uh, the uh, topological category or uh, combinatorial topological. I should say that though the, well, the theory itself uh, the, the, the interplay between various categories is uh, out of fashion, I would say, nowadays. As for counting the sense, it is terribly popular um, both among mathematicians and uh, physicists. I'll give a precise result uh, soon. But I want to look at this uh, theory from the point of view of the object we have um, introduced. Uh, unlike the other heights, we know something about Billy height. We know the precise number, or we can express in the combinatorial terms, the number of uh, objects with bounded height. 
it is exact, it uh, makes, uh, has a combinatorial sense and is exactly as it written here. Uh, though the experience and, well, some uh, perhaps more deep uh, considerations show that uh, we should count objects not uh, always by ones, but with the weighted with their automorphism groups. Of course, it has no effect on the asymptotics of uh, the uh, quantities. The generic algebraic curve has no automorphisms, and um, uh, of course, the Billy pair also. However, the precise formulas are like this. Uh, so, so, uh, so now I give maybe a, a bit tantalizing result, but let me spend uh, a couple of minutes trying to explain you what it is all about. So it is a recent paper, one of a great amount of papers. The moral is that there is some way of counting descents that is compatible to the whole of modern mathematics, physics, mathematical physics, and so on, and is beautiful, uh, though it is perhaps not obvious from what you see. I had to use the minuscule fonts just to fit it in the uh, slide. Uh, but the answer exists. Now, what do they count and uh, what they cannot count? Unfortunately, uh, here we work with uh, all the BLA pairs, not the clean ones. For them, there is also a combinatorial correspondence, but it is too long to introduce it, so I just ask you to believe, well, there. I, I can uh, explain it using colors and so on. And there are lots of explanations that I omit. Uh, so uh, we pretend counting BLA pairs, but in fact, uh, this uh, paper is about combinatorial uh, topology. So what is fixed, uh, fixed is the degree and number of pre-images pre of zero and of one. If uh, the um, uh, this end was clean, uh, this L would be just half of the degree, uh, but here it is uh, uh, zero and one are symmetric. And then uh, we um, fix the profile over infinity. I express it in the algebra geometric way, meaning that dots are, uh, well, the positive part of the uh, divisor. Uh, so the, there are m uh, poles with multiplicities uh, mu, and we fix them. Then uh, we write down the terrible, uh, uh, terrible generative functions. What is non-typical for classical generative functions is that they are in countable number of variables, uh, as is uh, shown here. And we just, for, for every term, we uh, choose the finite amount of them and uh, introduce uh, uh, S uh, here is, is it, will be, uh, it will be present in the differential operator. It, is, it has no combinatorial uh, sense. Now, the following monster is introduced, but perhaps it is an answer to some uh, question because uh, all this series of uh, uh, differential operators uh, just constitute a half of Verasora algebra that one can easily check. Uh, and then the exponent of this um, uh, generating function is annihilated to, uh, by all the inf these infinite, um, all these uh, operators. Of course, uh, yes? Yes, yes. That, that, that's why uh, we work with exponent. Yes, connected. Uh, uh, so, uh, now there is an important drawback in this, uh, well, from my point of view, 
uh, that I'm trying to share with you. Um, uh, all the quantities we are uh, counting now are make sense over arbitrary fields. So some versions of these uh, quantities make sense oh, in any characteristics. And uh, these uh, um, recurrences, of course, this, uh, the uh, differential equations like that uh, is just a, a rather short way to express some recurrences that uh, are called topological recursion. And physicists recognize them and give them some physical sense uh, as well. Uh, so the natural object is not covered currently by them. So that's it about the counting one. And then perhaps comes the most important uh, point. Uh, so we have the equivalence of categories that are basically very different. Therefore, there are some structures on the object of some of them that are, look very strange on the object of the other. And the action of the absolute Galois group is the most important of them. So uh, if we take a descent down function, just draw something, uh, we should um, associate to it the Bailey pair, represented somehow over algebraic numbers, act by the Galois group on the numbers, and then go back, uh, draw uh, what we get. So a very optimistic result is drawn here published by Lale, but known before uh, that uh, they, this action is um, uh, faithful. That means that theoretically we can see the who of Galois group just having, for example, we usually observe Galois groups, uh, group by its factor and unfortunately, uh, finite factors, unfortun unfortunately, we don't know whether any finite group is a factor of absolute Galois group, but, um, but we know that we can see any of them. So theoretically, if we knew more about combinatorics of the Sandown Fung, we could know, well, by the theorem, in some sense, everything about uh, Galois group. Though we are quite far of them, it is written here what's the current situation. It, uh, I would say it is rather sad. Uh, this construction shows that we'd like to uh, know the number of, the, uh, to know the answer uh, to the purely combinatorial questions. Uh, what is the number of descent down fung with given set of valences? Unfortunately, we don't know even whether the set of valences uh, is realizable. There are several conjectures about them, but um, it is an open question, unfortunately. So, well, if we are interested in this, the, the interaction of our categories, uh, for some time we have to concentrate on the purely combinatorial part of the theory, just to count. Now, the next uh, also striking thing, because uh, taking uh, the Sen Dan Fang, looking at the Sen Dan Fang, it seems to be rather difficult to, uh, to suppose what are the bad reductions. Well, bad reduction means that somehow, again, we don't have complete theory, at least I don't, I'm not aware of it, that, though I'm trying to read everything about that, uh, of course, we know what is a reduction of a curve. We can construct neuron mo model or something li like that. Um, but uh, we need to express everything in integers in order to reduce modular primes. The general procedure is at least not uh, written uh, anywhere. Uh, however, um, uh, there is a way out because, uh, at least theoretically, the Bailey pair are explained, are um, um, 
expressed in terms of uh, equations with integer coefficients. It depends just on our knowledge of um, moduli spaces, but well, we know enough uh, to be sure at the level of theory that we can write down the equation. Then they make sense uh, in all the characteristics except some finite number. Um, and uh, well, there is my maybe fantastic dream uh, is uh, that according to the Shafarevich finiteness uh, theorem, Shafarevich is my other teacher, um, um, there are uh, only finite possibilities for uh, the curves uh, with the prescribed set of uh, primes of uh, bed reduction. It is perhaps one of the least uh, explicit and, con and constructive theorems in the whole mathematics, but theoretically it is a way to find, uh, to realize a descent by um, uh, algebraic curves in well finite uh, amount of information. Uh, as for Cremona tables, in case of genus uh, one, there are great tables of elliptic curves sorted by conductors. That means, uh, and well, I was able to find a couple of them after the which is uh, the uh, calculations. As for uh, observations, uh, you are going to see something terrible now, and it's the only uh, example that I'm going to present today. Uh, now, what is written here? Um, in fact, we um, uh, first of all, these uh, pictures are mm, uh, descents of genus one, and just the opposite sides of all the squares are assumed to uh, be identified. Uh, and there are, and uh, there is the only cell, uh, we call it unicellular uh, descents, uh, um, uh, four edged descents. There are 11 of them in nature, uh, and uh, five are easy by some uh, reasons, and these are all the difficult of them. And these difficult ones uh, constitute one cubic orbit. Now, uh, the answers may be uh, badly normalized, occupy, well, uh, um, a, a sheet of paper um, in the uh, output of the computer, but there is something ob uh, objective, three J invariants. So we construct a cubic equations with the roots of these um, equations, and, and here it is. It means that the uh, J invariants are really complicated. Um, and what is important, this is the uh, leading term. Look at its nice factorization. And uh, some comments on the next slide uh, are like this. Uh, in fact, we can explain what prime, uh, so these multiples of uh, the uh, that equation, sorry, I'm afraid I cannot move back. No, it doesn't work. Uh, so there was three, um, three bad, uh, but I need to go back However, I am short in time now. Yes. So here we are. There were three bad primes, and it can be explained, but these great exponents that um, um, uh, psychologically say that if the uh, reduction is bad, it is very bad, and uh, we are unable to um, explain it. Uh, so now there was a method of calculation uh, to calculate them together. I'll just say a couple of words in the remaining four minutes about that. Uh, and the final mentioning of uh, heights, we uh, see the um, uh, descent of very low Billy uh, height. Uh, we have just four edges there and uh, terribly complicated. Whether this is typical, I don't know. 
and nobody perhaps know. Now there are some obvious, uh, now about the generalizations, the obvious um, directions um, perhaps uh, can be uh, skipped. Well, as for, say, the transcendent BLA functions, we are considering, um, uh, say, uh, plane trees and polynomial with, uh, polynomials with just two finite critical values. We can instead consider entire functions, and it is quite an interesting uh, theory. And uh, so on. Uh, well, just two words. As for more critical values, um, it is what I'm doing during the recent uh, years. See, the um, uh, uh, curves admitting a function uh, with uh, four critical values constitute system of curves in um, moduli spaces on which the um, uh, Billy curves lie. And I think it's uh, quite a basic combinatorical problem and related to moduli spaces and other things. Well, as for not obvious thing, I, well, I have no time to discuss it. Uh, and now, uh, well, perhaps I just, mm, uh, those who are not aware about these constructions can uh, perhaps just believe the existence, uh, but the molasse Penkawa work is not so well known. It tells us that, um, uh, well, the usual construction is about metrized ribbon graphs or uh, our constructions where all the edges are given a positive real length. So as soon as these lengths are commensurable, we uh, get again to the arithmetic curves. It is the theorem of molasse penkawa And uh, uh, well, the information here is that there is a paper by Paul Norbury who um, makes the whole theory quite elementary. And uh, well, my hope is that um, uh, we can not just uh, count well, uh, integer points in polytopes, but think about them as about BLA curves. And we need really the Lin Mumford stack for that. And perhaps this is a point of intersection with the, uh, the uh, current conference. So uh, that's it. As for the conclusion, you see what can be. Uh, said, uh, I'm not saying that the last question is quite serious, but well, for me, it is important, and thank you.